Hey, it's cool, but we easy. What's up? Ambassador, brother. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. Man, one of the most talk about artists in Philly. Appreciate it. Been in this game for over a decade. Makes sense. Been doing your thing for emoji, the other things like that. We just going to jump right in the interview. Welcome to LRB Wall Star interview. Appreciate it. Appreciate it for you having me on, on your platform, LRB Wall Star. I yeah, appreciate man. you guys. I mean, you've been doing this shit for a while now, and yeah, yeah. I can see like the growth. I can see the growth. Like you actually really doing well. I really appreciate, it, man. I really appreciate. It. I remember. I remember like uh, we haven't met in person too many times. No, nope. but I remember at, at the show we met and you pulled me to the side. Whatever. You couldn't make you couldn't make me you couldn't make me watch my my you couldn't make me watch the performance. You put me to the side. We had a conversation for over thirty minutes, and the show was over. I remember there was a Panto show, right? Yep. Yeah. And that yeah. conversation that conversation was mainly about a lot of different things in the entertainment side that uh, we really gonna speak on. But before we jump into that, we just want to know who is Scuba Weezy for those who don't know. Scuba Weezy for one is an entertainer. That's one uh, family man. Mm -hmm. uh, Cool guy, yeah. supportive, mm -hmm. who are uh, willing to help anybody that's willing to be successful and be up there. If yeah. it's not me, if it's not me, it can be you. That's yeah. just me. That's what's up, man. That's your natural. That's, that's what's up. Where did the name Scuba Weezy came from? <laughs> that name, actually, I don't even know, but my, <laughs> yeah, the name, the name, uh, Schoolboy, my, my friend just actually started calling me like Weezy. Yeah. So, I mean, like, and I actually really love doing music, mm -hmm. music and stuff. For me, my space of being peaceful and mm -hmm. having the right mind, I relate to music. So mm -hmm. if I'm like going through hard stuff and other things like that, I just relate to music. So as I started doing music, I actually really used to like Wheezy. So mm -hmm. my friend name just, I, I don't know how they came up with that name. <laughs> <laughs> I just love it, just say, you know, Scuba Wheezy, that's the name. When you say Weezy, what are you speaking of? I said like Lil Wayne, because when people say yeah. Lil, when Lil people say Weezy, I think about Definitely Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne yeah. yeah, yeah, Lil Wayne. And you got a dress too, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how long you been growing the dress? Yeah, how long you been growing the dress for? Five years. Five years. Five. Yeah, that's what's up, man. So, uh, when you first left Liberia, right? Mm -hmm. When you here, when you, you was in Liberia, right? When you when you first year, like, yo, I'm coming to America. Are you yes and your parents sent for you? Why was the process like coming to America for you? My process coming to America, it was it, it wasn't like a joyful one or happy one mm -hmm. because for one, I came here I was already sick. I came here, oh, I came here, yeah, I came to the United States sick. Uh, so, yeah, when no. I was back home, I used to play like active soccer. Mm -hmm. So on my team, I don't know who did it or who did what, yeah. but somebody gave me the, the African sign that people call Goa. Oh man. So yeah, I was in the sick bush for like seven months. Yeah. Almost to a year. I was in twelfth grade. Mm -hmm. And my parents, like my entire family was already here. Yeah. So they actually saw that it wasn't even getting better because the guy that was treating me in the sick bush, he told me that mm -hmm. if you stay home, whoever that always come and visit you, if that person keeps seeing you, you're mm -hmm. not gonna get better. Wow. So my coming here, I already knew that I was gonna I, I barely knew that I was gonna come here. Yeah. But I just didn't know the time. So Dang. doing that situation and everything. <clears throat> He just had to fast forward the entire process. He just mm -hmm. made me. I had to force my foot into shoes, yeah. wear big pants to cover everything. So immigration can't know that I'm actually coming to America sick. So I think, yeah. yeah, when I came here, it didn't take like, it didn't take a week. Mm -hmm. I got better. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Damn, I never heard that before. Cause yeah, I, my, I already, I already don't have for the, the my, that story. My cousin DJ Rose, right? Rest in peace to him, right? Mm -hmm. The guy who put me on the DJ and things like that. Cause I used to be a DJ, everything, mm -hmm. but he definitely passed away from that from go out. Cause what he was talking about, cause his whole life get right now. Bad. It's a really bad sickness in the life. Cause uh, people call it African sign, yeah, African and sign. then people call it go out and things like that. That's one of the horrible things I've ever. But I'm glad you really survived from that. I'm happy yeah. for you, man. So when you first came to America, right? Mm -hmm. Cause you know when we in when we in Liberia. When you when you hear conversations about America, we think about a whole lot of different things that come with America. But when you first came to America, what was it like for you? I mean, when I first came here, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't hard. It wasn't difficult. Cause mm -hmm. when I came here, it didn't take me a month. I got 
I got selected for a scholarship for, mm -hmm. for Wilmington College. I started playing. Mm -hmm. Even though I was there, my dad was being an African parent. Yeah. He felt like everything should go through him. Mm -hmm. But it actually didn't work because the white people don't work on the African time and stuff. Yeah. So I had to leave and drop off. Mm. But I was still like interested in doing music even before I even left Liberia. Yeah. So when I came here, you know, I got involved into the soccer and stuff. I was playing, I was playing active football. I really do, you know, play soccer like that. But I knew that I wasn't going to keep up with that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when I came back home after uh, Wilmington uh, University, because yeah. my dad was being difficult with the school program and stuff, yeah. and I started working, started doing music, going to the studio once in a while, True Story, shout out to, to True Story, I started going yeah. to him once in a while, and you see me, he was like, this kid really got something going on, so I should put my time into it. He actually never used to charge me or anything. Yeah. He used to record me for free, and I started doing it for like a year, two, three, mm -hmm. and then I got connected with a lot of big names, like Friday the Cell Phone Man. Yeah, shout out Friday. He came to Philly, he linked up with True Story, he listened to me, I was like, listen, I got to work with this kid, and me and he did a collabo, and he just went up from there. Shout out to Friday the Cell Phone yeah. Man, one of the dudes that really showed me love too. Yeah, he Even though we didn't, we're supposed to get an interview done, but we didn't get our interview done because of time. I call him as an energy. Yeah, and he, he <laughs> an energetic person. So very, like, yeah. you don't know where the energy comes from, but you're talking about African parents being difficult, and then that's one of the things, too, in African home that really crazy, that mm -hmm. really make the kids go different ways, choose a different route. Yeah. Because the way our parents be on us. But uh, they just jump right into music right now, right? The song Emoji. Right? <laughs> The song that had a lot of people going crazy in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. A lot of going crazy in Minnesota. A lot of people going crazy in Phoenix, Arizona. Mm -hmm. A lot of going crazy in, let's just say, Maryland, all the things like that. When you was making that song, why was why was your thought? Like, were you were you thinking like, uh, the song was going to go bigger, like it was going to blow, or you were just thinking like, oh, you know what, I'm going to just give this shit a try. Why was it like, why was that, why was that process like when you was putting the songs together and uh, also, Imagine like how much uh, impact that song would make. Uh, I knew that song. I knew that song was gonna be big because mm -hmm. for one, it was a Liberian sound. Mm -hmm. In the time that I did that song, that song was actually produced by Shadow Man when he just came Shadow, to America. Yeah. Like, we all was in the studio. I can't remember. I think it was uh, Young Moose. Shadow Moose too. JBS were there too. Uh, yeah. Uh, DJ Beans, Girl, True Story, Shadow Man, even D12, like every one of them was in like the same crib. Yeah. When we did that song, they actually like brought that Liberia vibe. And mm -hmm. for me, what I normally do, like, even though I'm residing in America, mm -hmm. I get myself from back home in here. Mm -hmm. That's why every three years, I always make sure that I go back home mm -hmm. and I come back to America to like be in between, get both sounds from both words and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, like, for for that song mm -hmm. is it's I can say it's a classic. It is. It's a classic. It I is mean, man. Imagi had everybody going crazy in the city. If I'm actually doing like performance right now, like mo like most of my performance right now, I really don't perform it. Mm -hmm. But I feel like people do be willing to hear me perform mm -hmm. that song. Yeah. But it's more other song that I actually need to promote than emoji because they already know the song. Mm -hmm. If I stop performing that song, people are going to sing along with the song. So I really don't need to actually put yeah. the energy into that. I need to put energy into other songs. Mm -hmm. I need to be heard. Okay, so uh, what we want to do too, we want to talk about features, right? Because mm -hmm. you got you got some features that really go crazy with people on it. Like Phil Caesar, mm -hmm. like uh, what you go, what they doing in Sawir, uh, Joey Costa, and other things like that. Right. When you're working with these people, what's the, what's, the, what's the process like? And when you're working with these people, what's the creative process like? The right question I would ask is when they're working with me, because I got my own vibe, my vibe not going to change. I like that. Yeah. I'm, j I'm just me, my vibe not going to change for mm -hmm. anything else. So mm -hmm. I would say that if they're working with me, mm -hmm. if like you cannot catch on to my vibe, that's fine. Yeah. But my vibe is not going to change. But working with, working with other artists, I feel like that's, that's something that I actually got to get more involved into because mm -hmm. when I started doing the music and coming up in the in this like real industry, like mm -hmm. I started doing songs with like bigger artists that I never even thought that I was going to do songs with. 
All you right. feel me? Like I, yeah. when I started doing music at first, uh-huh. I know I used to like do some with like local local artists and stuff. I started doing some with like big bigger artists, people that actually sat down and watched perform. Okay. I started doing songs with them. But, Even when I came here, uh-huh. I heard that true story was one of the big artists on this side. Uh-huh. I got a song with him. Cause yeah. like my sound was just different. I'm always me. I'm always gonna be me. So what's your relationship with True Story? It's moment? still the same group. I mean, everything's still fine. Yeah. Everything's fine. Yeah. I really just don't go back to the studio to record because uh-huh. I feel like doing the music. Uh, we're gonna do the music and go forward. We actually doing it for the next future and stuff like that. Uh-huh. So I feel like sounds every year is change. Yeah. So <clears throat> that change. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that change. So mm-hmm. I look forward to working with different producers, different artists and stuff. But yeah. certain people just want to, you know, like work with themselves and just be themselves and stuff like that. But for me, I work with different, different producers. Okay, that's dope. Uh, another thing we're going to touch on, right? Mm-hmm. I'm a bassa man, you're a bassa man. For a bassa man, you're a bassa man, right? Yeah, we're making that happen. For a bassa room. Ah, please, I'm making you. <laughs> All right, man. Wait, wait, wait which part of which part of Bass are you originally from? River says. River says? Yeah. Oh, so I'm from I'm from uh, I'm from Oh, okay. But I was born in Bonaz Farm. I was born in Red Light, actually. I was born in Red Light, but I grew up in Bonaz Farm and soaked in there in Red Light. All right. So you know, shout out to Bonaz Farm, shout out to Red Light, shout out to Soaking, that's where I'm from. Mm-hmm. So we the Red Light people, right? Mm-hmm. We want to know the meaning, right? Because you're from Philly. This term is from Philly, right? How can you break down the meaning of the war? Because we hear this war a lot of time in Philly, my daughter. How can you break that down for those who not who, those for those who don't know, like we're not Liberian at all? Mm-hmm. How can you break that term down for them? What's the meaning of that, my daughter? My daughter for American people is the same thing as saying my nigger. Yeah. Uh, what's up, bro? Yeah. Or like Brandon say, my man. Yeah. <coughs> Stuff like that. Yeah. That's why I was singing too. Because when I hear my doctor, it's like you just I just respect you as a you hustler. Actually, you you actually really present the word my doctor. You yeah. actually you actually calling the the, yeah. the how you call it degree or achievement. Yeah. Or as a doctor, where yeah. you call yeah. my daughter. My dollar, because I was trying, I was trying to fix it a little yeah, bit. Cause it's, my it's like, it's my like, my, is it's like my dollar, my dollar. What's all you, my yeah, dollar? So when we hear the term my dollar, because American girl asked me like, yo, when you say my dollar, everybody see always calling you a dollar. I'm like, because she asked me, I'm like, oh no, it's just like me saying like, yo, what's up, bro? Yeah. Or what's up, big bro? Or what's yeah, up? I see you doing your thing. I respect you from the mile away, just like that to me. Mm-hmm. But I just want to know from your perspective, like, how do you put that? How do you like distract? How do you describe that? That's why I wanted to know. Yeah. That's it. Like saying, mm-hmm. oh, what's up, girl, or something like that. Yeah. So, uh, another thing, too, Philly got crazy slangs. Mm-hmm. Philly got a lot of different things. Philly got the food. Philly got everything. Yeah. I'm going to buy some, man. I know you about to get mad at me while I'm about to sing. <laughs> but the top of gear, right? It's a love my thing. Mm-hmm. But I'm that nigga that just fuck with the top of gear. Heavy. But not love my man. But not love my man. So, my favorite soup is top of gear. I just want to know, what's your favorite Liberian dish? Dry rice. Dry rice? Mm-hmm. Why dry rice? Dry rice, mama, and a pasta buffet. Dry rice is a solid dish. Dry rice with mama, and a brand man, and a pasta man, and eat it every day. You know the people <laughs> that eat it, and never smoke it? You see, yo, you gotta do that. <laughs> you, you, gotta, you gotta do what people like that, man. <laughs> but yeah. Dry rice with mama, yeah. even though, like, the mama here is ready now, like, yeah. The ones back home, or jar of mama or jar of small fish, pepper, yeah. bitter ball, egg, fried fish, mm-hmm. you can do that. Hey man, you work, your foreign artist working with you, right? Got you in the gospel song. That's why one of the things people don't know. Mm-hmm. So when we do, when we do our research, we do our research crazy. You got a gospel, you got a gospel song with a, with a, with a, with a Congolese artist, right? Yeah. And the thing about the record is that I don't understand Swahili. No. But I mess people that speak Swahili. But you had three, it was three different artists. It was you, it was Hall, mm-hmm. and was it an artist that got respect for you more? Yeah. That I heard that you was managing. Yeah. And I want to touch on your relationship with that artist. Mm-hmm. When you went on that record, I just want to give you the prop that I respect you for keeping the Labyrinth culture wise back on the record. 
But when you was doing that, what was going in your head? Was it like, oh, I gotta keep this hundred percent Liberian because she was speaking Swahili, she was speaking mm -hmm. Lingala, she was speaking different Congolese languages. Mm -hmm. But when you was doing it, because Liberia got sixteen different traps, and you stay, you stay keep the Yenswa, you stay keep the Glipo, you stay mm -hmm. keep the yeah. everything's coming too. Why was it like you making yourself being proud of your culture? How did you feel making yourself feel proud of your culture? If I would do a feature with somebody and they sh show off, or let me not say show off, or go, let's say, deep in the country in the dollar mm -hmm. and go English, yeah. there's just a sign that, there's a sign to tell me that, listen, mm -hmm. we got to push our own sound and culture. So mm -hmm. she, she never even needed to even tell me that, listen, mm -hmm. you got to do this. Yeah. Cause I know that she, where she was doing it from, she was doing it from a good place. So I feel like, listen, I gotta show off too. Yeah. So I respect that, man. I took it back to Bas to where was this? That was my first actual uh, mm -hmm. gospel song I actually did. And I like the. But then the thing again, I actually went there. I went to the studio that day to actually do the recording. Mm -hmm. I wasn't thinking that I was going to do a gospel song because yeah. I paid, I paid, I paid for a three-hour section. Yeah. I paid for a three-hour section, and the producer actually told me, "Listen, I'll give you actual two hours because mm -hmm. this artist that I'm actually working with, I feel like your sound actually going to go well with her sound." Yeah. I'm like, oh, "Let me listen to the song." So mm -hmm. I listen to the song, but then it's a gospel song. It is. <laughs> yeah, all right, yeah. So yeah. I had to make something happen. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I did what I could do. Scuba Weezy in the city, right? It's more known. You've been doing this for 10 years, which is a decade. I think if we give you respect, we should give respect to you. We should give you, we should give you respect the most because there's not a lot of people in this thing for 10 years. Especially if I feel you feel like I got so many different, different Hell artists yeah. and stuff. Hell yeah. yeah. So you've been doing this thing for 10 years. Uh, what advice would you give to an up-and-coming up artist that want to jump in this music field? Because you, you are spending able to pay for the sessions, paying for videos, doing a whole lot of different things that come with this being in that. So it's like a lot of money coming in. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you're probably getting a lot of money out too because you look fresh, man. You look fresh to death, man. I try, man. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to know. One, one, one main key factor I, was, I, will always, I will always tell, like, upcoming artist is staying humble yeah. like in a room of let's say i can say like three or four people in that room mm -hmm. and you make it five you don't know who who is who yeah. so you always got to stay humble yeah. and be respectful reach out to people you're not reaching out for handouts yeah. but know that your sound gonna speak for yourself or always Mm -hmm. Stay humble and keep working. That's it. That's I mean that's how I survive. Yeah, then, man. Cause I've been here for like eleven years now, and yeah. when I came here, like legends that I've been working with, mm -hmm. I can say that right now mm -hmm. they're not even getting more plays than I'm getting play right now. Yeah, that's just me like following the wave, listening mm -hmm. to different sound, just keeping my head down and being humble. Okay. And keep putting in work and stuff. That's a fact. And I won't lie to you, I would say, like, respect to my management and people that actually believe in me mm -hmm. and supporting my music and stuff. Mm -hmm. They actually, like, uh, they, uh, they actually got that for 100%. Because it's like, it's just crazy that you gonna have people that, you gonna have people that actually not getting anything back and they still, like, believe and invest in you, knowing that, listen, I know what I know what you're capable of. I know what you work. Yeah. So we're gonna keep doing it right now. <laughs> stuff gonna happen. You feel me? Like yep. stuff like that. Yeah. So I just like keep keep doing it. Keep keep doing it. Keep doing it. Cause like right now, mm -hmm. I actually look at that. I'm like, listen. It's a lot of people that actually investing and working hard towards my career and stuff. So I'm like, alright, listen. Mm -hmm. At first, I was the artist that just want to go in the studio and just make the music. Yeah. So now I feel like, damn, alright. I gotta have my own studio in the house. I got my own studio in the house. Mm -hmm. And it's still not working because I'm like a family oriented person. Mm -hmm. I wake up in the morning to go record my studio. Yeah. My daughter making noise. My son be <laughs> jumping around. So I'm, like, yeah. I'm going to close my garage and make my garage into a studio. Mm 
Mm. So now I got my garage now that's going to be opened up in the city. So now I'm going to sit in there for yeah. like 24 7. Yeah. Yeah. Recording. Yeah, man. Speaking of kids, speaking of speaking of social media, you can never have one. <laughs> but you know what's crazy? I ain't got one right now, though. Please, if you never really don't have one. You know what? My excuse was like, I don't think I got enough money right now to make. <laughs> that's that's why that's that's my excuse. Uh, speaking of kids and all things like that, speaking of your daughter and your son and everything like that, we just want to know like, how do you balance like family life and music? Cause you want to just do like everybody gonna expect a hit from. Mm -hmm. And also you got family to see, you got family to take care of. Them. So how do you balance those two as an artist? Like the normal American dream that people have from back home to yeah. to the United States, mm -hmm. that you're gonna come here and see all go down on, you're gonna walk on glass, the road, you're not gonna see no charge and everything. Hell yeah. That's there. That's not happening. <laughs> so for one, you gotta provide for the family. That's and how you're gonna do it is is <laughs> it actually depends on you. <laughs> for me, uh like I said previously, I'm a family oriented person. <laughs> That's one. Yeah. And music is my space of peace and silence. Yeah. So how I actually balance that? Uh, I got days that I work, mm -hmm. and my days that I don't work, mm -hmm. that's my days that I take for studio time. So okay. if I'm if I'm not working for like two or uh, two days, mm -hmm. that two days I make the best of that two days yeah. with my music and stuff. Okay, that's the best of it. That's good, man. For me, I must have to work overnight, so that's why a lot of times you don't see me at parties and things because I work on that shit. And what I do is that I work from Thursday to Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So you can't catch me any time between those two times between the states. It makes sense. So I mean, Tuesday morning, I'm off. But man, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? And that's the best thing, too. When you're off on, on the weekdays, nobody can call you and tell you shit. Because when they call you, you want to be the one to call them, hey, what you doing, man? You say, man, the party on Friday, man, be like, yo. I got work on Friday. <laughs> but I, on Wednesday, you want to hang? And nobody want to hang on Wednesday. That's true. But um, we see other things coming right now. I heard some unreleased record you, that you, you played for me. You did. You had the You had the privilege of calling me, and I was in the studio, and then, yeah. And uh, I'm not going to put names out there, but who's that? Who, who the artist that you really excited, that you got a record with right now? You really excited to drop that record with right now? Like, you think, like, oh, you know what? I think this record is the, it's, it's the perfect time for this record right now. I won't say the perfect time, but I'll say the mm -hmm. person that I'm actually on a record with right now, mm -hmm. I feel like if we drop that record, it's going to make mm -hmm. a huge difference. It's Buck. Yeah. Yeah. What was it like? What was that record like? What was the process like coming in together? Because both of you are from Philly, so I know that it's not that hard. Because both of you are from Philly, because at the end of the day, we Philly people, right? Mm -hmm. When we in the city, we don't like each other. When we out of the city, mm -hmm. we going to die together. Like We're going to ride together to the end. Okay. So, but what was that record like you working with Bucky Rod and your own Philly brother? Because I'm going to call you your Philly brother because that's how it is in Philly because that's how we call everybody our brothers. Working with Buck in, in uh, circumstances like uh, mm -hmm. Bucky do rap. Yeah. I sing. So, the entire song, mm -hmm. the song is, is like, the song, the song was like, I can say, I can say like the vibe. Yeah. The vibe came from Buck. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of like, you feel me? Like, an artist that actually rap. Yeah. He actually brought that melody vibe to the mm -hmm. song. Because it's like, I had a beat, right? Yeah. But uh, when he listened to the beat, he grabbed the vibe way before I did. <laughs> that's crazy. That's, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that, that's yeah. what I'm saying. So, yeah. It was like it, it was kind of like where when he actually sent me the song and he actually had a melody that actually matched the beat mm -hmm. and when I listened to it I'm like Yeah. Yeah. This song is like we actually gotta actually like focus on this song and take our own time and just not like make it like any song that we just gonna go in the studio, just freestyle on or just do anything and then just drop it. Yeah, so I right. actually uh, took my time and up to now we're still working on the song. The song is not even out of the studio yet. Mm -hmm. So for moving forward from as for now, mm -hmm. I don't know when the song gonna be dropping. Yeah. So you guys should just expect the song to be out anytime from now. Schoolboy okay. and Bucky Raw coming out soon. So other than what other than the record with Bucky Raw, right? I just wanna know. What are you working on right now? Other than that, just that record. Just keep that record out of the way because we already heard for that record. 
other than that, what are you working on right now that, we, gotta, that we should be expecting from you right I'm now? I'm working on a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. New stuff. Or well, I can say new or stuff that new that you already know. Yeah. And other stuff that's not mm -hmm. out there. Yeah. Like, uh, like right now, I got a song with uh, Phil Caesar that's not out yet. Shout out to Phil I got Caesar. a song with uh, uh, L.I.B. Foreign Shout that's not out yet. Yeah. There's like I can say like basically there's like my second team because like I always work with them back and forth. Yeah. Apart from other artists that's in Philly, because mm -hmm. you know Philly got so many artists. Got what? Got like, so what? Thousand like, man. It's a lot. Man. <laughs> Everybody yeah. take themselves as number one. Yeah. So it's like, man. Yeah. There's certain people that I work with, uh -huh. like for for me as an artist, I don't take myself. As a bigger artist than other people that yeah. actually do music, because mm -hmm. like I said previously, like I keep my head down, I stay humble. Yeah. If I know that your sound is dope mm -hmm. and and it's good and it's like something that I can actually get on or work with, yeah. of course we're gonna make it happen. That make be sense. Yeah, uh, but if you're not gonna find that though. All right, so just to let you know, right, we about to start a freestyle session. I'm gonna just put this in the air right here. Okay. So and the artists that watching everything, we about to start the LW World Star freestyle session. I'm inviting you personally okay. to that freestyle session and you will be one of the artists on the freestyle. If you're ready, just let I'm me know. I'm open up for that. And you wanted to do too, I reach out to like, we really don't talk that much, but whenever we talk, it's always like good energy. Mm -hmm. And I respect you for that. And uh, we had a conversation at Quanto Show. Mm -hmm. You pulled me to the side, you said like, oh, you felt like uh, librarian artists, uh, librarian promoters were being biased to certain artists and things like that. I just want to know, right? Because in the promotional field, right? I look at it as a business, mm -hmm. right? From your perspective, you look at it, just, you look at it whatever way you look at it, right? From I'm my, a business man too. From my, from my perspective, right? Mm -hmm. You're an artist, I respect your craft, I respect what you're doing. But do you look at me as a businessman? I look at it as an artist and a businessman. Because at the end of the day, your artist, when I'm doing shit, with, when I'm doing things with you, right? I really don't come directly to you. If I come directly to you, that means I know you personally. Mm -hmm. That's why I come directly to you. Right. But if I don't know you personally, I reach out to your team. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. And then we talk about that. You got the end of the business is business. Right. The reason the reason I don't charge people personally, the reason I personally don't charge people, right, is because I don't do it for the love of the money. I do it for getting somebody out there so that we can say, oh, this library artist is out there. But why really make you think that? Why make why really make you feel that uh, selling promoters is being biased? So I uh, like you said you you do it you do it for you do it for the what? I just do it just for the love, just to get somebody out, just to get somebody name out there. All right, so uh, I feel like that's where you you guys actually get it wrong because mm -hmm. you guys. Are the blogs and yeah. promoters? Yeah. So what do y'all promote? Y'all don't just promote empty air. Y'all promote the artists. They actually making the music to entertain the people. Mm -hmm. You're not an entertainer. I'm not. You in the entertainment circle and stuff. Mm -hmm. So like, if you don't have like Bucky Raw, you don't have Masi Blanco, you don't have Phil Caesar, you don't have Yada B Foreign or whoever it is on mm -hmm. your platform. Yeah. Nobody gonna look at it. That's true. So you cannot charge me for that. Uh. Never. You should pay me for that. For me, I don't charge for that. You don't. That's what I'm saying. Now. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. So yeah. like, the artists now should actually take that stance, but we're not doing it because why? Mm -hmm. We are actually doing it. We actually take that business side and just put it down and go like, listen. Let's just do it for the love and just mm -hmm. push the culture of everybody. So I feel like promoters yeah. here yeah. should actually feel the same and have that same energy. So, but for me, see, listen, me, uh -huh. I've been doing this for like how many years? Ten, years. Ten almost. I can say 10 year plus. Yeah. If a person hit me up, normally, because mm -hmm. a lot of people right now do not know my management team, and that is perfectly fine. Yeah. It's very fine. Like, because like great people, mm -hmm. when I know the management team, they make friends with it, they won't be like, oh, yo, mm -hmm. I know this person. Oh, my man, let me just get school ball in the show for this and that. Yeah. It's fine like that. Mm -hmm. If people that reach out to me and I be like, listen, mm -hmm. being that I know you and stuff, I'm going to hit my manager up and talk to him. Yeah. He already got his mindset, what you want to do? Yeah. So regardless of what I go to him, he's going to still tell me, listen, tell that person to contact me. Okay. So from my, from my, from my point of view, right, as a promoter, right, mm -hmm. my thing is that if you are artist, right, that feel comfortable charging the promoter, right, 
They just say, I got an event, right? I don't try to promote her. No, I'm just saying something now, because a lot of artists do this. That's why it lead to me stop working with a couple artists. Okay. Right? But at the end of the day, I put my differences aside. Whatever personal issue I get with you, I put that aside and still promote your music, because I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing it for the people. Right? But let's just say, uh, if you're in a position where, uh, where artists that you promote all the time, and then you call this artist over to come and do a show for you, right? Mm -hmm. I know it's still business, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day, my time, my energy I put into this work, I've been promoting for over six months. That six months, if you calculate it, I probably got at least like 14 or 16 hours. Mm -hmm. And when you come into my show, that event is probably a 30 minute set you're gonna do. Mm -hmm. So if an artist come to my, to my, to my event and charge me, they just say an artist charge me a thousand dollars plus, right? Mm -hmm. So, if I if I'm comfortable as a if I'm comfortable as a promoter to pay the artist a thousand dollars, would it be fair for me to charge that artist when he coming back for promo a thousand dollars plus per promo? <laughs> you got when you look at it like that, it kind of sounds the same because that's why we promoter really go true. When we doing our events, artists don't show up, artists don't pull up. Not every artist though. You got I know artists that are gonna show love. I know artists that are not gonna show love, and these are the artists that will promote the most. And we even talked about this in the DM. You told me that. You told me you felt some kind of way. Yeah, remember right. I told you that. Listen, you told me that, and I told you here's why. The thing, here's the <laughs> thing about here's the thing about the blogs and the artists. Yeah. If an artist reach out to a blog, yeah. to to promote their work, mm -hmm. that artist is supposed to be charged. Yeah. If you just promote that person, it's it, it's no charge. It's no charge. So what's the problem? It's no problem. Definitely, my thing is like I'm just saying like. If I show you the same love, right, as a, as a promoter, right? So now, now, if if you if you never have an artist on your platform, mm -hmm. never ever promote that artist on your platform, yeah. and you want that artist to actually show you love, do you true. expect that love? No, I expect a charge. Exactly. So I expect a charge. That's fair enough. But my thing, my thing with you, I never asked you to do a show before, so actually, mm -hmm. so you people who are watching this, yeah, yeah, I you never know, asked you. Know, this is this you is just, we just having a conversation. You know so. I never asked you the event, but they just say like a lot of times it happen where we invite artists and they tell me say, oh, send me the five hundred dollars, send me the thousand dollars, send me two thousand dollars to come on the show. To come on your show. Yeah, to come on the to come not even not even the show because I, I respect that because I myself I even been on I even been on the on the on the board that they was bringing foreign artists on and charging foreign artists much and I told them whatever artists that I gonna recommend from the library community they gotta pay an artists like not the same. As that, but they gotta pay the artist a decent amount and make sure he got whatever he gets straight. If he get in the session, mm -hmm. that's what's up. If you pay an artist five thousand right. dollars and you come and book a little uh, a library artist that you think he's not well known, if you pay him five hundred dollars, make sure he's not paying for session. If you pay a thousand dollars, make sure he's not paying for session. Mm -hmm. That's why I always do. But I'm just saying, like, if I talk, if we if we have in a conversation, like, just like in a general feeling, like in a general law, mm -hmm. I just want to know, like. How do you get your music out there with these promoters? Like, uh, cause me, I didn't have issue with you, never but you did. told I had issue never with you, did. and never we had did. that conversation. Never did. And that conversation being that conversation being out there, but how do you like break the gap between an right. artist and a and a, and a promote and a blogger? How do you break the yes. gap? Yeah, yeah. One thing that when we had a low conflict in the inbox and stuff. Yeah. Um, my thing was. Now, but I didn't respond. You were the looking, conflict. Look, I didn't look, respond. I think. Look, I, looking, <laughs> look, looking at your. <laughs> looking, you looking, looking at your, looking at your platform, looking yeah. at your platform back yeah. in the day. Yeah. You were like, and me, I know myself. Like mm -hmm. when I came here, it been let's say I just been 11 years. Yeah. I told my my guys back home. Yeah. Like after every three years, I'm gonna go back home, Liberia. Yeah. Regardless what happened, I'll go back home after three years. Yeah. And when I came here and started doing music, mm -hmm. I noticed that a lot of like the platform here mm -hmm. and back home, they promote artists back home. Yeah. So being that that I know I knew you like personally, like yeah. maybe we never really you know. You never had yeah. a conversation about each other. When I look at your platform and other platforms out here that actually promote librarian. Entertainers and stuff. Yeah. Y'all was more, y'all was mostly focused on artists back home. That's so I'm like, listen, That's this man, fact. this man actually fuck with like uh, mm. slum life men and he mm. like hang out with them and stuff. But mm. he, his platform shows something else. So that's yeah. not real love. That's not yeah. like support and stuff yeah. like that. So yeah. 
I felt I felt some type of way, even though it, it, it still wasn't it, making music at that time. Even even though it, Bucky was still doing, Bucky was making music. It, even though but it never had, up. even though it never had anything, to, yeah. even th anything to do with me because I was in my own lane, doing yeah. my own. Shout out to the slum too, just not yeah. to cut you off. In my own lane, doing my own stuff, yeah. and I'm I'm still doing the same thing. But I actually felt like, and and, and that's the thing about me. A lot mm -hmm. of people don't know, but behind the scene, mm -hmm. it's like. I would take an artist's music, like I remember you and you play uh, yeah, Prince Walton, one of the Prince dumbest Walton, artists exactly. from Iowa. Yeah. And I actually refer that music to a couple of other people. It's yeah. like I'm the kind of person that if my music cannot reach to certain ears, yeah. other artists' music can actually reach them. Because if it's fact, not man. me, I it could be somebody that. else. I appreciate but, that, but, but then yeah. looking at the blogs and other stuff is like <clears throat> You know, they're not even happy all that in the diaspora. Like, <laughs> why the fuck us back home? And it's like a lot of good artists here, and nobody actually paying attention. Yeah. So it's like, all right. But I'm gonna answer that question for you, right? Why, why we focus mainly on the artists back home? The artists back home, right? It's like something called ego. They don't really give a fuck about ego. They gonna come and sing the song right away, like yo. Yo, my dad will post the thing for me right away. They're not business man. So, right. so, so, so is it actually wrong or bad for we the artists have to be business man? It's not and, bad. And, and, and it's not, it's not, it's from, it's from not. Do. But just get my point right, it's not bad. But at the end of the day, I don't know every artist. I don't know when you got a new song coming up until you post it out. Mm -hmm. until, uh, until that's how it's, that's how it's supposed to be as a until, business man. Until I artist. follow you, right? Until a I business, a business, a business, listen, a business, <laughs> yeah. a business give you a day that they're going to job stuff and you be waiting to actually see that's that it right there. Is the anxiety to actually go and grab that stuff. That's a fact. But if, if, if you're not sitting and just getting anything that you want to get, you're going to respect that person? I will still do respect. You'll still do respect them. I will respect your personal because like, I'm a different person. That's why I say like, if a person reach out to me like, yo, I got a record I'm working on. It's coming out soon. Mm hmm I can't respect that more. Now you make me excited for the record. Right. When that record drop, I'm gonna be the first person, or if I'm the first person, I'm gonna be at least on the first ten people list right. to listen to that record. But if you drop a song, you didn't tell me about the song. Everything is not really going. I don't really know because that's a lot of different artists. Instagram work like this. If you post a song, if you post right now, right, mm -hmm. and about ten thousand people already post the same time you post. So whoever posts faster than that person, that's the person she I gonna see first. Mm -hmm. And I'm not on Instagram 24 hours. I'm on Instagram for only maybe 30 minutes. I'm out. So that's why I'm saying, like, I would rather, I would rather artists reach out to bloggers and things like that. Hey, man. It, no, for me, artists should reach out. Make your management reach out. Right. Like, hey, man, my artist about to drop this in. So, so time, check it out. I'm waiting to check it out. I'm waiting to hit in the link. You know, to mm -hmm. that. But I understand your point. I understand what we're talking about. This is the main thing, man, that I really want us to talk about on the interview. No, no, you are going to chop that up. But what we're going to do. We go. We go. We already talk about that. We already talk about everything. I heard that you got a. Uh, you got something going on in Liberia, like a charity yeah, yeah, organization. Uh, if you want to speak on that for us. Yeah. Right now it's like all right. So um, it's family, is music, mm -hmm. and I'm a person that I actually love to give back. I'm yeah. not rich. Yeah. Even though I I'm in a year of stuff, but I know where I came from. So it's like I always I'm always willing to like give back to. Yeah. yeah, to where I came from. So yeah. I started this thing in America here mm -hmm. that um, I was trying to do it with like librarian, librarians, entertainers, and stuff mm -hmm. to have each artist like make a video and stuff and, and let me know that listen, I'm gonna take this shoe mm -hmm. and donate this to like uh, shoes, shoes, suit or shoes for school. Yeah. In Africa or in Liberia and stuff, mm -hmm. but that didn't go well because the group chat that I actually created, mm -hmm. it, you know, Liberian artists on this side, <laughs> like, yeah. So yeah. I actually just forgot about that, but mm -hmm. I decided to do it on my own. Yeah. So, so far, so good. I got like six boxes that's already back home in Liberia. Yeah. So, which I'm going to be going back home this year mm -hmm. to actually like launch and go and share back to. Uh, less privileged students okay. and give them back like shoes yeah to go to school like students that don't have the proper material to actually okay. go to school because yeah. i got a lot of friends there that was in affirmation room and stuff they don't yeah. have parents and stuff yeah. so Me i just gotta do that for my own yeah. i got it hard yeah I, no charge or anything so anybody that's willing to help anybody yeah. that's willing to be a part of it just hit me up on instagram sk double -L -B -O -Y. If you ask easy, why hit me up and let me know. Uh, if you got shoes that not 
Shoes, that's it. Shoes that's fairly used, not mm -hmm. shoes that you know. Wet nine and shooting and zuko and thing and wet back away. I will cut you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a pair of shoes we leave on you right now. I'm mixing. I appreciate it. I think it. I got, I I think I got about six or seven pairs of shoes back. I'll give you one. I got two more boxes that mm -hmm. they are, uh, should be sending back on next month. All right, man. I appreciate that yeah. too, man. And uh, we also got we also got organization back home. I don't like to speak on because uh, it comes with a lot of controversy, a lot of bullshit coming with it. But uh, we already talk music, we already talk upcoming work again. Uh, can you tell the people where they can meet you on all digital platform and all social platform at? Well, uh, if you're trying to get in contact with me, mm -hmm. you can find me on. You can get at me at. S K Double O L B O Y W I C Z Y. Mm -hmm. Everywhere, just go and just type it on Google. You gonna find me. Yeah. Schoolboy Weezy. Schoolboy Weezy everywhere. Everywhere. Wow, oh, that's more professional than mm -hmm. that shit. Just make it easy. And uh, thank you for coming on the show, man. No I really appreciate you. Appreciate your time. No I problem. think we still got we still got a lot to talk about. Yeah, and face time too. We still gonna talk yeah, about that. Happy. But thanks for the time and everything like that. And uh, this is LRB One Star interview. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, like, and follow. Shout out to LRB One Star. Shout out to Fuji's. Even though it's my first time being here, but I'll definitely be about to go and walk. You know what? I'm going to say this, right? I'm going to say this about Fuji's, right? My first time trying that, I take it from Fuji's. I really fell in love with it. I think we should put them on the top five. I check it out in Philly. I'm going to recommend that. If not because I know you're you're not seeing him, but JB is here. But not because. But don't forget, right don't forget, listen, don't forget, listen, don't forget. Yeah. Follow LRB World Star. Go and subscribe to LRB World Star uh, TV or what? Yeah, LRB World Star. Right. LRB World Star subscribe YouTube to LRB World Star YouTube channel. Yeah. Go and subscribe to my YouTube channel. School uh, S K W O L B O Y. School Boy Weezy and Fuji. I think or uh, or uh, Fuji is on Instagram too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Go and follow, follow them. them on Instagram everywhere, man. Share the love. Keep the love going. Yeah, we, it's 